Woohoo! Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about 6.4. This is all about factoring perfect square trinomials and difference of squares. And so we're going to go ahead and start off with our formulas. These are formulas that we did study earlier, but we studied them in a slightly different setting. I also have my support carnivore, Sharktopus, is here, um, ready to be supportive, but not intrusive. So I'm going to ask him to stand a little bit off to the side so we've got plenty of space to work. And let's get to it. A perfect square trinomial, I'll remind you, comes out of the following. The word trinomial means three terms, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. This is three terms. I know it looks, there's a lot going on, but basically the terms are the ones in between the pluses. Remember that. So one, two, three terms. Now, sometimes there's a plus 2ab, sometimes there's a minus 2ab, but it's just always going to be those three terms. And when we see that pattern, we know it breaks down into either a plus b squared or a minus b squared, depending on what the sign is on that second term. And um, so what I thought I would do is, um, sadly, I don't have an Elton John puppet, um, which I really wish I had one right now. But um, so I'm just going to have to sing with, sing to you without Elton John. But this is the circle of math. It's the circle of math. Oh, I regret that already. OK, so uh, a plus b, the quantity squared. If I multiply out, let me move this sideways. Then I get to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If I start with the trinomial and I go back to the factored form, what is it called? It's called factoring. So here's the circle of math. You can go from the factored form to the multiplied out form. And I promise I will never sing to you again, at least in the next hour, because I regret that now. Okay, but don't let it be said. I won't do anything to help you regret and or learn math. We'll go with one of the two. Okay, so that's the first set, these perfect square trinomials. And we're including them in the same section with difference of squares, which seems a little weird, but the idea is, is this is a plus b times a plus b, or a minus b times a minus b. And the difference of squares is what happens when you take one of each. You've got an a plus b and then an a minus b, or vice versa, an a minus b and then an a plus b. If you've got that, that um, uh, structure, then you're going to get a squared minus b squared. And notice there's no middle term. We don't get that 2ab in the middle because one positive and one negative, they cancel each other out. So hopefully you remember that from the first part when we were learning to multiply out polynomials. Then there's every, every student's favorite one, the sum of squares. If you come across something that looks like a squared plus b squared, it can't be factored. It's prime. You're done. Yay. But, and this is a big but, you need to always look for common factors. That's really tricksy. So remember, always look for common factors. That's the first thing we started with. And so it's always going to be the first thing we go through. OK, so here I've got three, well, more than three, but on this page, three examples. Let's go ahead and see how they factor, if we can factor them. So the first one is x squared minus 4. Now, as I look at that, I see there are two terms. And that's going to be one of the keys to really factoring uh, quickly. I see there are two terms, and I don't see anything common, right? This has a couple x's. This has a 4. There's not anything in common, so I don't have any common factors. But I do have two terms. Now, as I come up here, the perfect square trinomial requires three terms. Difference of squares has two terms, and sum of squares has two terms. So I say, OK, so it's, it's likely to be one of these. 
if anything, because it's possible sometimes we get patterns that just don't fit anything and then we're just stuck. Things are just prime and we don't, we have to wait until, uh, you know, the next couple math classes to learn a little bit more to be able to factor them. So let's take a look. We've got a minus in the middle, which means this is not a sum of squares. Darn, I know. Everyone's like, oh, it's not prime. Okay, so difference of squares, it's good. It factors. Ultimately, we want things to factor because it's going to make the math easier. Trust me. In the future, it will really make the math easier. So if it's a difference of squares, we want it to fall into this pattern of something squared minus something squared. So my question for you is, can we rewrite x squared minus 4 as something squared minus something squared? And the answer is, yeah, we totally can. x squared is just x squared, and 4 is just Dora the Explorer style. You're right! 2 squared. So if we can get it into this format, I'm going to write down the formula down below, a squared minus b squared is equal to, and you get one of two choices. And I usually go with the plus one first, so let me do that one first. But could you do the minus one first? Absolutely. A minus b, there we go. Okay, so in this case, a matches up with x. So wherever I see an a, I'm going to put an x. So far, so good. a and x match up. 2 and B match up, so wherever I see a B, I'm going to put 2. There we go. And that's the factored form. I've taken that giant Lego and broken it up into the little pieces. That's what I've done there with that product. Now, how can you check? Well, you could FOIL this out. You could actually multiply first x times x. That's x squared. Ooh, there we go. Then outer minus 2x, then inner, plus 2x. Those are going to cancel. And then plus 2 times negative 2, negative 4. That's where that comes from. So you could foil this out to double check. Okay, shall we do another one? Promise no more singing. I know, I'm, I'm scarred too. I, I regret it. Okay, now, number 2. x squared plus 4x plus 4. So the first thing I notice is there are three terms. This is a trinomial. And so if this does correspond to one of these patterns, it's going to be a perfect square trinomial. So the first thing we want to do is see if it matches this pattern. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead. I'm With this one, I'm going to write the pattern first. This one's a little bit more complicated. Now, first question you should ask me is, how did I know to pick the first one and not the second one? Good question. How do I know to pick the first one, not the second one? You're right, because this has x squared plus 4x plus 4. So with all the pluses, we're in this land. We're in the first one. The second one has a minus right up in the, in the very second spot right there. Okay, so let's see. A squared, yeah, okay. I can write that as x squared. And then b squared, okay, very similar to what we did up here. b squared has to be 4, so what could that be? You got it. That could be 2 squared. And then the question in the middle is, we're supposed to have a 2ab in the middle. So how do we test for that? And this is what we do. You start with a 2 that is just part of the formula. So this 2 just goes right there. Then you take the x. Well, I take the x. Some people take the other number first. There we go. So then I take the x and then the 2. So I take a 2, part of the formula, the x, and then this. So each of the a and the b get mashed in. Now let's check. Do those two match? What is 2 times x times 2? 2 times x is 2x times 2 is 4x. Oh my gosh, it matches. If it matches, then you get x plus 2 
squared. And I can already sense that a lot of you are like, what the what? What even happened there? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to see if this polynomial matches this pattern. So you check that the first term is a perfect square. You check that the last term is a perfect square because that's what it says to do in the formula. A squared at front, B squared at the back. And then in the middle, we got to have a mix. In the middle, you have to have a two and then whatever the first one is and then whatever the second one is all smashed together. And if that in the middle matches what you actually have, you have a perfect square. And how do you make the perfect square? The perfect square is made with the first, the A, and the last, the B, right? Because this formula is A plus B, the quantity squared. Now, I will be really honest with you. I'm going to bring my, my uh, support animal back in to remind you that you're awesome. Sharktopus thinks you're awesome and amazing, even if you're feeling a little bit wibbly right now. And I'm going to say, honestly, we're going to study a lot of ways to factor this middle one. It may be that you never use this. There are a lot of people who never use this. They use other methods. There are going to be two other methods in this class, and then... If you continue on in Math 90, there will be a ton more methods there. We love factoring in math, so that's that's a big thing. So you're going to learn other methods. So if this is still a little bit wibbly, give it a try. Do your best. See if it can make some sense. If it does, awesome. If it doesn't, don't panic. There will be other methods. So by the end of this chapter, you will be able to factor this some way. And then there, we'll come back to it at the end of the class and there'll be another way to, to factor it using something called the quadratic formula, if you haven't studied that before. I know now everyone's like, oh no, and hiding under the bed. Don't hide under the bed. Sharktopus says you can do it. You could totally do it. You're awesome. Okay. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Good news, the next one has two terms. Now the next one also has two very complicated terms, 25y to the sixth minus 49x squared. Oh my goodness, that's a lot. So let's take a look, two terms. So it's not a trinomial. It's either a difference of squares or a sum of squares if it matches one of these formulas. Since there's a minus in the middle, the only one it can match is a difference of squares. Okay. So remember, for difference of squares, we try to see if we can write each one as a perfect square. And that's pretty much it. It's a very simple formula. Uh, not easy, but simple. There's only one step. Okay, so 25. That's a perfect square. What squared gives you 25? You got it. 5. Okay, and then I'm going to skip the y part. I'm going to go to the 49. 49 is a perfect square. What squared gives you 49? You got it, 7. Now, the x squared, that's not too bad, right? What squared gives you x squared? Well, it's just an x, right? The question then becomes, what goes here? Definitely a y, but y to what power? Do you know? And I can hear that some of you have got it. Some folks are not sure. What if I told you that it's y cubed? y cubed times y cubed is y to the sixth. Basically, I took the six and divided it by two, and I got three there. Okay, once you can write it up like this, then remember, you write 5y cubed plus 7x, and then 5y cubed minus 7x. Woohoo! Kind of woohoo. Maybe a little woohoo. So this is another section where you're going to find that you have a lot of practice. And always feel free to ask me any questions. Uh, my job is to try to help some of the stuff make be easier or, um, you know, make you be grateful that I've stopped singing or something like that. So um, hopefully, you know, if you have questions, definitely ask. Okay, shall we? I'm, I'm worried about what's coming next. Okay, 
We got some more problems. Are you ready? Remember, you can always pause this. Go ahead and get some sunshine. Um, you know, get some hydration. Get a snack. Um, pull together your support crew. Pet an animal. You know, look at some pretty things. You know, look at art. Listen to music. All that wonderful stuff. Okay, so when you're ready, I'm going to continue on. But you can pause me. I will not feel bad. I won't, I won't actually even know it. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. This is the second page. The second page, you know, is always going to be a little bit more tricksy. So shall we give it a good try? This first one, 4x squared plus 16. Now, I'm going to show you the wrong way to do it. You ready? The wrong way is to say, okay, I've got two terms. And 16 is just 4 squared. And 4x squared, I could write that as 2x the quantity squared because 2 squared is 4 and x squared is x squared. And then I go, oh, that's a sum of squares. That's prime. And then I'm done. Okay, where's my mistake? Dun, dun, dun. Let's go back over here. Sum of squares. A squared plus B squared cannot be factored, so it's prime, except for common factors. So let's go back and let's look. Were there any, pardon me, Sharktopus? There we go. Were there any common factors? And the answer is yes. Common factors first. which if there were such a thing, I would say CFF, but I don't think I'd remember that common factors first is that, but you know, you could be like, oh yeah, CFF, all the cool, th all the cool kids know, CFF. So what does that mean? That means I've got 4x squared plus 16, and I can factor out, what can I factor out? I could factor out a two, that's true. Is there anything else I could factor out? You got it, a four. If I factor out a 4, I get 4 times the quantity x squared plus 4. Now this is sum of squares. Which means we're done. We can't go any further. We stop right here. We put a box around it. We say that is fully factored as far as we can in this class. If you continue on to Math 60, you will learn about other techniques for factoring this. The way to factor this is going to involve someone something called imaginary numbers, which is pretty cool. Um, but we're not gonna we're not gonna work on that in Math 40. So um, you'll have to wait till when you take your next math class. But it's coming. But for right now, we're done. We're like, you know what? We don't know how to factor it any further. It's a sum of two squares. We're stuck. Okay, so next up, dum dum dum, 9x squared plus 15xy plus 25y squared. Ooh, that's exciting. That's exciting. So, three terms. If it's three terms, then perfect square trinomial. Maybe it's a perfect square trinomial. And so we're going to try to get it to fit into this formula. Okay. But again, I'm going to remind you, there are other ways to do this. So if you really hate this formula, you don't have to use it. I know a lot of people who hate this particular formula. That's why I say that. Okay. So remember, the first term has to be a perfect square. Is it? Is 9 a perfect square? Yes. It's 3 squared. Is x squared a perfect square? Sure, it's x squared. Then you go to the last one, 25y squared. Is 25 a perfect square? Yes, it is. That's a 5 there. Is y squared a perfect square? Yep, it's y squared. Then, and let me remind you what's in the middle. Again, this is all pluses. Yay, so we're still in this land. What has to be in the middle? A 2 and an A and a B. Let's test. Do we have a 2 and an A and a B? So we should have a 2 and an A 
and a B. Do we have that? So what is that? 2 times 3x is 6x times 5y is 30xy. Do we have 30xy in the middle? Oh no! We don't have it. It's not a, what do we call it? Perfect square trinomial is what they call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a perfect square trinomial. And you just got a little window into the fact that um, there are some terms in math that go are, are ubiquitous. Uh, for example, sum of squares is pretty much the same across all books. But perfect square trinomials, sometimes different books call it slightly different things. So sometimes I'm a little for, bit forgetful for what book calls what thing what. But basically, this is a perfect square and it is a trinomial. Is it? This one is not. So what does that mean? Well, for us right now, we can't factor it. So we're just going to stop right there. We would say this cannot be factored using the techniques we know. Now, might there be other techniques? Absolutely, there are other techniques that we could try. So we could see what was going on using those other ones. But for right now, we're just going to say this doesn't fit the pattern. And if it doesn't fit the pattern, then we're just done with it. So let's look at number six. Oh my goodness, look at this one. Very reminiscent. This one is 9x squared plus 30xy plus 25y squared. So let's try breaking it down. Can I come up with perfect squares at the beginning and the end? Yeah, 9x squared is 3x the quantity squared. 25y squared is 5y the quantity squared. Nice. And then for it to fit the pattern, what has to happen? I have to have a 2 and a 3x and a 5y. That all has to fit together. That 2 that comes for free and then the, the um, and in fact my arrow is, my arrow, you know, sometimes you shoot an arrow and it just doesn't go where you want it to go. And those of you who are like, I don't even know. I've never gotten to shoot an arrow. Oh my gosh, you should try it sometime. Go find a place that'll let you shoot arrows. Uh, preferably, you know, not at people, at, at targets. Um, um, I'm not endorsing any sort of Hunger Games style math class. No, I'm not. No, absolutely not. Um, but, uh, you know, shooting arrows is actually pretty fun at targets. I'm just going to say, you know. Targets that are not alive. I just little circles on the wall. It's pretty fun. Okay, so let's look at what's happening here. I've got that two that I get for free. I get the A and I get the B. And again, let me show you on this sheet, I'm trying to make it match up with that formula right there. I'm trying to make it a perfect square, A squared, and then 2AB, so 2 and the first one, the last one, and then B squared. So that's how I'm matching it up. And in this case, 2 times 3x times 5y. Wait a minute, that's 30xy. That's what we have. Yay! So it follows that pattern. And if it fits the pattern, then you can use the formula. And the formula then says... Um, if, if it fits the formula a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, then you get a plus b, the quantity squared. Now what's a? a is whatever inside's here, so that's 3x plus b, b is right there, plus 5y. Don't forget the squared, and there you go. And again, if you're not sure, Foil this out, multiply it out, make sure you confirm that that is correct. And that's it. You guys are well on your way. 
Again, remember, these can be very frustrating. There can be little details that if you miss them or if something goes a little bit wonky, then the whole thing gets very frustrating. So remember the rules. Do not spend more than half an hour on a single problem, uh, maybe even less. And if you do run into a problem, you know, message me, message a tutor and ask some questions. What we really want is for you to get some good solid practice and get, get nice and fast at this, but we don't want any frustration because we don't want you to end up hating this. This is actually a really great skill so you can build it up and then you can do math and, and math is just going to come so much more easily. So that's the goal is to get good at these so that when you see them, you'll know how to factor them easily. Okay, you guys are awesome and amazing. Sharktopus really believes in you and is very proud of you. And I will say, woohoo guys, congratulations on finishing 6.4 and math on.